Do you want to know what is a reasonably good approximation of a flow field in a tornado? If yes, continue watching this video. Because in this video, I will talk about cyclostrophic balance and cyclostrophic winds. And it turns out these winds are reasonably good approximation of tangential flow field in a tornado sufficiently far away from the surface. What is cyclostrophic balance? That is balance, exact balance between pressure gradient force and centrifugal force. And all other forces in horizontal direction disappear. When this happens, we have cyclostrophic winds. This is balanced flow, which means there are no accelerations in the direction of motion, so speed is unchanged and the only thing that is changing is direction of velocity. Again, we are going to use natural coordinate system and you will see that the problem in this coordinate system is extremely, extremely simple. Basically, one line derivation or one line equation. If we used some other coordinate system, then this could become extremely complicated problem, but we don't want to complicate our lives for nothing. So, let's use natural coordinate system and tackle this problem in a very simple way. So we will start our analysis of cyclostrophic wind by writing horizontal momentum equations in natural coordinate system, namely dv dt is equal negative delta phi delta s and the second equation v squared over r plus f v is equal negative delta phi delta n. We derived these equations in my video on natural coordinate system and everything is explained there. Here I will tell you that phi is geopotential gz f is Coriolis parameter, r is radius of curvature of the motion of air parcel, therefore v squared over r is centrifugal force, delta phi over delta n and delta phi over delta s with negative signs are the pressure gradient force, this is acceleration, and g is acceleration due to gravity. So cyclostrophic wind is a balance, which means there is no accelerations, which means this is zero, which means this equation doesn't exist. At the same time, we neglect the influence of Coriolis force, which means this term over here is zero, which means our motion is at really small horizontal scales. So from this equation, we see that V is equal square root of minus R delta phi delta N. And this is velocity, constant velocity. V has to be positive, remember, in natural coordinate system. And that velocity is this cyclostrophic wind. Let us now see how this formula tells us that cyclostrophic winds can turn in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Now, in atmospheric sciences, in northern hemisphere, we say that counterclockwise rotation is cyclonic rotation. Maybe it's worth writing. So counterclockwise is something that we called cyclonic motion, and clockwise is something that we called anticyclonic. So let's look into this motion. Here is the center of this curvature. Clearly, this is counterclockwise, which means it is cyclonic. Well, if I take particle over here, air parcel, velocity is like so. Pressure gradient force is acting in this direction, pressure gradient force, and centrifugal force, centrifugal force is balancing the length of these vectors is the same, and velocity is like so. Clearly, in this case, we have a low pressure system in the center because pressure gradient force is pointing towards the center. Now, in this particular case, you see that R is positive. So let's write that down too. R is positive. This 
is curvature to the left and delta phi delta n is negative because positive n is like this. This would be positive n unit vector, which means that this under the radical r delta phi delta n ends up being positive. Now the other situation that we can have is motion like this in circle. Let's take force, let's take particle over here, let's say. It has velocity like this. Pressure gradient force is acting to the right. Pressure gradient force, this is towards the center of the circle, which means this is a low pressure system. And centrifugal force is acting to the left. And this is clearly clockwise motion, which is anticyclonic. Furthermore, in this case, let me write here to save paper, R is negative. R is negative, well, go back to my video, natural coordinates, you see this is curvature to the right in respect to the direction of motion, and that is negative curvature because normal N is to the right of vector V. If normal is to the left, like it was here, then that's positive. Here, this is negative, and therefore this radius is, we say, negative. However, in this case, delta phi delta n is positive because uh, I should really say this is negative n because it's to the right. Positive n is in this direction and because this is low pressure as you are moving in the positive n, pressure is decreasing here expressed through geopotential because we are in the pressure coordinate system and we see that this term negative r delta phi delta n again ends up being positive real number which means that small scale vortices can have both cyclonic as well as anti-cyclonic motion we say small scale and we know they need to be small scale because we just neglected Coriolis force. If they are large scale, then this assumption is not correct. So what would be a nice example of this cyclostrophic balance in our atmosphere? The answer is tornadoes. Tornadoes are uh, relatively small scale vortices where Coriolis force doesn't play important role and to a good approximation far away from the surface where roughness can be more or less neglected, we have a balance between centrifugal force and radial component of the pressure gradient force. However, in Northern Hemisphere, for example, there is preference for tornadoes to rotate in cyclonic way, in counterclockwise direction. This has to do nothing explicitly with Coriolis force, but this is because tornadoes are really embedded in the environments that favor this type of rotation compared to anti-cyclonic type of rotation. And that's observational fact. However, the environments are affected by Coriolis force. And we will see that when we study how wind changes with height, namely wind shear. So while Coriolis force is not directly responsible for rotation of tornadoes in Northern Hemisphere, it, to a certain extent, indirectly affects that because it directly affects large-scale environments that actually create these tornadoes. And these environments fi favor this rotation over this rotation. However, it is not uncommon and we can find tornadoes in Northern Hemisphere that indeed rotate in clockwise direction. Furthermore, another beautiful example of cyclostrophic beam balance are dust devils and water spouts and when you go to these scales, that indeed, it's 50% chance they will rotate in cyclonic and 50% chance they will rotate in anti-cyclonic way, which means there is really no preference for rotation. And cyclostrophic wind balance is reasonably good approximation for these types of vortices. In future videos, sometime from now, I will talk way more about tornadoes. I believe I will have months and months of videos about tornadoes because there are so many other things that I want to talk about. Various analytical models that we use to represent tornado flow field, 
Tornado Genesis, which is theory of tornado formation, or rather our lack of proper understanding of tornado formation, tornado thermodynamics, and so on and so on. In next video, we are going to talk about gradient wind balance, which is one of the most fundamental principles in atmospheric sciences. So stay tuned. Until then, goodbye.